everyone and welcome back to Mexico, obviously. Yeah, I haven't gone anywhere else. Um, I'm not in Culiacan anymore, but this video is about Culiacan. Firstly, a couple of things. You might notice a bit of a weird setup here. There's this like black thing. Um, it's because it's one of those tables that comes out of the wall because this place is quite small. So I can't like move. So you're stuck with this position. And also I'm a bit sick still. So if you saw my community tab on Instagram, you know that I was basically dying in Los Mochis about a week ago. So I didn't film a video there. It just wasn't physically possible. But hopefully my voice will not go like Barry White, my sexy voice throughout this video. So um, let's get going. <laughs> the first thing I wanna say is the word normality. That's a theme of this, and I'll come back to that at the end. And also something about these Kulia Khan videos is that I had to be quite diplomatic about what I included in the videos because you may not know that YouTube isn't exactly liberal in what, in allowing YouTubers to talk about certain things or show certain things. So I. I was a bit lucky with the Jesus Valverde bit because I kind of mentioned the D word and the C word, if you know what I mean. And in the past, in videos in in Colombia, in Japan, Korea, Vietnam, I've had videos demonetized, blocked worldwide because of the subject matter. So I had to be a selective about what I talked about and show showed. Yeah, that's right. You know, I had to be a bit indirect when saying certain things, like when I said about. Um, Oh, there's a lot of affluence here. What I was really referring to was the fact that, you know, it's possibly due to the DCs, if you know what I mean. The drug cartels, they won't demonetize this one. So what did I think of Kulia Khan? Overall, I bloody loved it. I really liked it. I've said many times before, not just in Mexico, that I, that I tend to approach cities or new places with a completely blank mind. One where I don't take into, into consideration people's recommendations, people's suggestions, people's warnings, things like that. But I have to admit, going to Culiacan, I did go there with a bit of that misconception in the back of my head. I think it's natural when you, you hear, at least personally for me, I, all I've ever heard about Culiacan and all anyone has ever told me about Culiacan has been danger, chaos, murder, acid baths. And it was weird for me to go to a place to have that misconception in the back of my head. It's difficult to describe even though I did my best not to go there with that. Clear can is Mexican normality. There's that normality word again. You know, walking around the central area, it's just hardworking, everyday people going to, to work, to college, whatever. Just as everywhere else in Mexico, you know, not everyone in Clear can is connected to cartels, as I said in one of the videos. Everyone I found in Culiacan that I spoke to, that I dealt with, Airbnb hosts, food, places, you know, everyone was helpful, welcoming, hospitable. I always use those words in videos, but it's true. There wasn't this aggression or, you know, lack of human touch, if you know what I mean, that I kind of expected. Durango, I've said before, there is an aggression or grittiness in some people, or not lack of politeness, but the politeness level is kind of lower than elsewhere in Mexico. Sinaloa, and particularly Culiacan, was just like the rest of Mexico in terms of how people are. Obviously, there might be exceptions. There are exceptions everywhere. But on the whole, in general, my experience of the people in Culiacan was brilliantly positive. It was brilliant. <laughs> Let's go on to food. Okay, so many people said to me that Sinaloa has some of the best food in Mexico. And I have to say... They're right. <laughs> it's a, a state that is completely almost not on people's radar in terms of food. People always talk about Oaxaca, Oaxaca, um, or, you know, other well-known food places. I don't like the food in Oaxaca. I didn't really like Oaxaca at all. Guanajuato, you know, the food there is terrible in comparison to, to Culiacan. It, the thing about the food is that it's so different. It's almost like a new country. Uh, th th that bloody sushi sashimi. I know that, you know, that typically the proper sushi sashimi would be um, like the fried rolls with the sauce on the top. But what do you want me to do? T t ask them to take it back and, you know, make some other stuff. No, I'm not made of money. <laughs> but it was still, you know, kind of Sutsilalama sushi. I also had, you know, other food in my own life when I'm not filming. <laughs> so I had a lot of other dishes as well that were just divine and completely different from what I would see elsewhere in Mexico. The big problem though with food, and I, oh God, this is going to be controversial. I feel like a heroin addict 
who is desperate for corn tortillas. And this isn't just about Culiacan or Sinaloa, but Northern Mexico in general. I think, I feel like Durango is the, the border of where corn tortillas become flour tortillas, if you know what I mean. Oh my God, flour tortillas, I can't deal with them anymore. They're just nowhere near as good or tasty or whatever. You know, yeah, the, the food is perfectly fine. It's perfectly edible. But in, in terms of my own preference, flour tortillas are terrible. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, anything is either good or bad because I have to be all diplomatic on YouTube. Um, but really, flour tortillas, tea, bleh, flour tortillas are crap um, in comparison. And I can't wait to get back to, to central Mexico to have some proper corn tortillas with some al pastor um, and all that lettuce and stuff on the top. That was the... <laughs> That's the only problem. And the, oh, Brothgate 21. That's the new food related catastrophe that I didn't put the broth on the gorditas. How am I meant to know? <laughs> and there was also a comment like, um, oh, you should have seen what people were doing with it. Yeah, fair enough. If I wasn't filming, but filming is my priority. I'm not going to be looking around what people are doing because the focus is on getting the shot. And I'm going to do a video about this, I think coming up about the difference between regular sightseeing and when you're filming a video, because they are completely different. And yeah, that'll be a future video, lovely. I think Kalia Khan gets singled out because of its reputation. And so many people, you know, just don't have the balls to go there. I'm talking about YouTube couples, um, <laughs> but you don't need balls to go there. Honestly, yeah, I think people's fear is it's from within themselves. It doesn't come from the place that they're in and if someone demonstrates that fear that they have then things are going to happen to them i think you know kulia can more people need to go there it's a gem it's an absolute gem in terms of the people the things to do the food it's such a contrast to the rest of mexico and, and not just kulia can but you know, northern mexico in general so i'm really glad i went to kulia can it should not be singled out as this violent hellhole it's a lovely city it's a little bit grungy in places. Someone used that in a comment and um, I thought that was the best word to sum it up. But I love those sort of grungy areas, you know, when people say, oh, you should have gone to this beautiful area to do that walking around area. That wasn't the intention to show beauty. It was to show real life and normality in Mexico. And that's what Clear Can, for me, really demonstrates. The last thing I want to talk about, it, again, it could be another controversial thing. It's something more about northern Mexico in general and the issue of typical colonial architecture. You know, I'm talking about the beautifully uh, manicured streets of San Miguel and those colourful buildings or whatever that, granted, are absolutely beautiful. I love them. Maybe not San Miguel, <laughs> but other places, you know. But the thing I've recognised that I have started to realise in northern Mexico is that there's more to Mexico than that colonial aspect and also beaches that we read so much about that is covered so much on YouTube and in other media platforms. That grungy, more modern, real life aspect is equally as interesting, you know? And when I look at places like Mazatlan, for example, this is a bit of an exception with the Northern Mexico thing, but this is when I realized it. I was walking home from filming a vid one of the videos there. I was walking quite a long way and I had to go through some quite crummy areas if I'm honest and then I got to that central area and everything was perfect and it was beautiful and manicured and why do I keep saying manicured and I kind of felt like well this is where the investment has gone and that's understandable because government's tourism budgets will obviously go to maintaining those areas fair enough there's never going to be a, a total level of consistency across every area in a city anywhere in the world that's fine but uh, the feeling I have now about those colonial areas in centers of cities that are very touristy is that it's fake and i don't mean fake in a, like a derogatory way i'd mean it in a way that it feels like it's polishing a turd that's a lovely saying where, where a city might not be generally the most wonderful and beautiful but that this central location is thrown in and maintained to give this impression of the fact that everything is clean and perfect again you know i'm not being negative about those areas because they're lovely. I absolutely love them. But coming to Northern Mexico and cities like Culiacan, Durango, Torreon, you see that different side of Mexico in which those colonial areas aren't necessarily required to give that city a feeling of Mexico. There is more to Mexico than those colonial areas. And actually, I, I feel like I prefer cities that are a bit more authentic in that respect. 
where they haven't got that huge contrast between paces. Kulia Khan was consistent, I would say, across the board. Even, you know, the central area with the cathedral, yeah, it was lovely, but it wasn't that same level of makeup put on uh, an ugly person, if you know what I mean. It was more consistent across the board, and that's what I liked about it. It demonstrates Mexican normality. Ooh, I think I'm done. Lovely. Um, yeah, I think I've covered everything that's on my laptop to my left. Brilliant. Yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Kulia Cam videos. I thoroughly enjoyed filming them, despite the heat and despite the regular illness. <laughs> but hopefully I'll be better for the Chihuahua videos, which I'm starting to film from today in YouTube world. So I'm probably out filming right now as you watch this. So um, they'll be up very soon. And I'll uh, see you next time from this place, Chihuahua. Catch you later.